Welcome to Blog Talk Radio in high fidelity. You are tuning in to a Goldilocks Productions presentation of the Quantum Path Radio Show with Dennis Anderson. Dennis is a psychic medium, a hypnotist, and spiritual teacher. He has had a gift to perceive the subtle energies from an early age, turning off the gift at the age of 20 to live life, love, and understand human behavior. To have it reawaken again during his late 30s due to a calling that was loud and needed to be answered, Dennis was urged by spirit to learn more, grow more, and share his gifts that others can benefit by exploring their own unique abilities. Call in now if you would like to speak to Dennis. The call in number is 713-955-0594. Press 1 so that you can get into the host queue. Welcome everybody to another edition of the Quantum Path Radio Show. I am uh, happy once again to be here with you again today, and it is a day that is, let's put it this way, has got a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, The first thing that I um, do want to mention, please forgive me if my voice sounds a little bit hoarse or raw, I guess you could say, mainly because of the fact that uh, I just finished doing uh, the yoga and wellness show in Toronto this past weekend, and it was a lot of fun. Met a lot of great people, actually. Um, did a lot of talking there. <laughs> it was crazy, let's put it that way. Um, but there is a lot of it, um, kind of interesting things out there. Like, uh, you know, like there was one lady, for example, like she made these beautiful dream catchers, but they were so unique. Uh, and that's the thing there. Like usually most dream catchers you'll see in kind of like, uh, uh, one hoop or one circle. Um, but she actually had three of them, so it kind of looked like an atom almost, you know, like with all the the lace in between kind of intertwining and, and so forth. It, it really was lovely, actually. Like, it was, it was incredible, actually. <laughs> I don't know how she did it, but obviously she did it some way or another. Uh, so it was very, very nice. Uh, let's put it that way. Um at, other things too, you know, like there was another lady there that was, uh, you know, she had some uh, stuff from Bali actually that she was importing, you know, and and they were making all these wonderful sort of accessories and necklaces and stuff like that out of old tires and inner tubes, which I thought was, huh? <laughs> like that was really kind of weird, I thought. But, you know, like as I went over and I, I took a look at some of the stuff, it was it was kind of neat. <laughs> so the thing is, though, is that, you know, keep your minds open, uh, and that's the biggest thing here, you know, like when you can keep your mind open to some of the interesting things that are out there. Uh, there's another guy, actually, he was uh, talking about uh, Ormus, uh, or I guess, you could, I guess you could want to call it Ormus gold, or they call it monoatomic gold, or something like that. Um now, I understand that some people look at things as like, oh, that's just the, the snake oil and, and so forth. But you know what? If you're getting results from something, and if it, and if it's a positive result, then, you know, why why not look at it? You know, like, why not examine it? Why not see if it actually does work? As long as it doesn't have anything toxic in it or anything like that, then obviously, you know, maybe it's something that you can look at. Um, the Ormus Gold stuff, actually, like I ended up buying a, um, a small little spritzer of it, and basically what it was, actually, is, and from what I understand or what I was told, uh, there's a, a larger amount of, I guess you could say, magnesium. Now, as I was told, though, is that magnesium is one of those things that uh, we have a tendency to forget uh, to incorporate it into our lives, mainly because, like, we're so focused on calcium and, uh, you know, heaven knows there's a lot of things on the TV about calcium, like, you know, okay, drinking milk and uh, making certain your bones are strong and, and from osteoporosis and so forth. But they were saying, like, you know, like, yeah, we're, we're very, you know, calcium enriched, I guess you could say, but we're forgetting something along with that, and that's the magnesium aspect. Now, I'm not a doctor. I have no clue. Um, but the thing is, though, is that um, 
it was kind of interesting. You know, it was interesting to look at. It was interesting to listen to. Um, I did end up spraying a little bit on my wrist, actually, because uh, as an electrician, let's put it this way, like I, you know, I use my my hands quite a bit as well as my right, you know, my right wrist, I guess you could say, due to, you know, using pliers and everything else. Um, but the thing is, though, is that, you know, I sprayed a little bit on there, and actually I've kind of noticed over the past day or so that actually does feel a little bit better. Um, so who knows? <laughs> that's the thing. Like, I, I don't know. Time will tell. Um, and the thing is, though, is that, you know, like, look at various aspects. You know, like, there's a lot of different healing modalities out there. Uh, and that's something that I've definitely come across. You know, like, there's there was a lot of people out there that were exploring uh, these, I guess you could say, these uh, electromagnetic resonance sort of things that can be put into your body sort of thing and um which has a i guess you could say a resonance of, of the of the same thing as the earth actually does so that this way it uh, um it, somehow it affects your own electromagnetic sort of field um and let's put it this way we are an electromagnetic sort of being i guess you could say mainly because of the fact that you know, we do produce a lot of energy, and we do uh, use energy. Like, let's face it, you know, we're 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 walking antennas, you know, and that's why, let's say, for example, psychics and mediums, like after training, what did they do? They're picking up on the energy of of you, you know, and that's what they do. Um, I was doing my aura photography, and and that's what I take a picture of. I take a picture of the energy that's actually around you. Um, and the interesting thing too is, is that with the, the yoga practice, you know, like it really does have a wonderful way of balancing things out because it does have a bit of a meditation aspect, but because there's also the physical aspect of stretching, which is actually very beneficial, you know, and and you can't deny something that, let's put it this way, has been around for, I don't know, three thousand years or however long it's been um but let's put it this way there's there's something to it you know and uh um there's even talk uh you know from i guess you could say uh uh, there was a book called the autobiography of a yogi by pramanansh uh something something Anyway, I can't remember his full name. It, it just doesn't strike me here right at the moment. But the thing is, though, is that as he was writing it, though, and as he was talking about it, he was actually saying that, let's put it this way, Jesus possibly went to, um, you know, like the the Middle East, you know, or I should say uh, over towards the, the Southeast Asia, and that's where he learned a lot of his, I guess you could say, skills and techniques, you know, and that's up to you. And, and like, let's put it this way, I wasn't there, so I didn't witness it, but there is that aspect that there is a possibility of it, um, that he supposedly had studied Kriya Yoga, uh, which in turn ended up bringing out various spiritual aspects uh, within his own life. And therefore, he was able to bring that back to, you know, like places like Israel and and so forth to um, to share that with the world, because he did have an enlightenment sort of period there. So it, it's interesting. Like I said, you know, like it never hurts to look and try different things. Not everything is going to resonate with you, you know, and that's the thing there, and that's okay. Um, it's kind of like when I teach, uh, you know, what, what I do, you know, like whether it be mediumship or psychic development or whatever it is, um, not everybody's going to resonate with me, you know, and, and that's okay. Like, I'm all right with that because maybe just the way I'm, I'm coming across or maybe, um, maybe the message or whatever just doesn't feel right to you. And therefore, you know, like it doesn't totally resonate with you, whereas somebody else, it may. And that's okay. You know, like find the person that you resonate with. Try different teachers. Try different uh, methods and different groups and stuff like that. Uh, I know that uh, meetup.com 
is a wonderful place to go and, and develop, like, and create, I guess you could say, like a, a an easy profile, and you can put in there things like spiritual development and so forth. And it's a good way to get in touch with other people that are very much interested in the same sort of thing as you. And there's various groups out there that do organize, I guess you could say, various various meetups. Um, and therefore, you know, like you can learn, you know, and and try different teachers, you know, and because you never know what you're what you're going to learn from it. Heaven knows, I did, you know, like I tried it myself. Uh, and yes, there were some teachers I, I really enjoyed. And there's some teachers that was just like, eh, you know, like it didn't really resonate with me either. So, you know, it never hurts to try, that for sure. Now, the other thing, too, that I uh, did want to discuss here today is, is that um, I wish to give all the families and all the uh, the people that have been affected by the Los Angeles or Las Vegas, I should say, uh, uh, shooting. Um, from what I understand, it is the the largest uh, mass shooting, I guess you could say, within the U.S. history. Um, I guess there is, a, from what I understand, there's about 58 people now uh, that have possibly uh, lost their lives um, and from what I understand, that number kind of has a tendency to kind of grow, uh, and another 400 or whatever were affected by that. And it's sad and it's frustrating to when you hear these things um, in the news or in the media and so forth. And my heart does go out to these people. Uh, my heart uh, goes out to everyone that has been affected by it. And the person that did the shooting, uh, from what I understand, I, I think he ended up losing his life as well, or he took his own life or something. I, I'm not familiar totally with the whole story. I just kind of caught bits and pieces of it here today. Um, but the thing is, though, is that, um, from what I understand, he's he's no longer around to account for his um, his crimes uh, on this earthly plane right at the moment. Um, from what I understand, there's, you know, like even his, I guess his brother was kind of shocked about this, uh, from what I understand. Uh, if I'm wrong, please, you know, somebody correct me on that. Um and it is. It's, as far as I'm concerned, it is criminal uh, any time you take another life. Um, and it, it, it's, it affects a lot of people. And it's not just affecting the 400 and, and the, the other 59 that ended up, or 58 that lost their lives. Um, but it affects the world in general. Uh, because everybody feels this breath of despair I guess you could say, uh, grief. Um, and the other thing, too, is fear. And that's a big part of this. You know, like, unfortunately, the media will give you a lot of fear, and they will keep uh, sometimes breathing some fear into it. Uh, because what do they do? They usually say, like, oh, you know, like, you never know when it may happen near you you know, and that type of thing. Uh, and those are words that can be very... Um, it can throw you off, and it can, like I said, make you feel very fearful for your own life and for your family's life. And yes, you know, you do want to be vigilant, I guess you could say, and watch, because this does seem to be a more uh, volatile time uh, heaven knows, like I'm, I went outside for my walk here today, and I looked up at the sky, and the moon was already up. And uh, guess what? It's already almost a full moon. <laughs> you know, and uh, what ends up happening on a full moon? Well, that's when all the things seem to start, seem to happen. Uh, and it's very sad, though. You know, like it, it's a it's a waste of life, and it, and it's. You know, but the thing is, though, is that there's a reason, and there are reasons for things to happen. 
the polarization of the planet is happening. You know, like there seems to be that less gray area in between everything now. And um, there seems to be more black and white as compared, you know. And what can we do to confront this and to battle it? Well, first of all, don't be scared. You know, don't let fear control you. That is the biggest thing here that I do want to share with you, is don't let fear um, take precedent in your actions or in your decisions. I've seen a lot of people that do that. And I've seen institutions do that. Excuse me, I just had to take a drink of water there because my, my throat, like I said, is very hoarse today. Um, but institutions, and I mean by schools, you know, mainly because of the fact, like, I remember, you know, uh, when I was playing in, 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 you know, like as a child or whatever at school, like, you know, like I used to come home with a lot of different bruises on my legs and on my arms due to, you know, playing ball and football. Heaven knows half of the time our football was more like tackle football than it was like just supposed to be touch football as compared. Um, but it was fun, you know. And, yeah, we did get some scrapes and bruises and stuff like that. But now I understand that, you know, the, the, some schools have actually banned having a ball out in the out in the playground, mainly because you know they don't want somebody's eye to be hurt or something like that. They always have this knee jerk reaction uh, to a situation, and that's what we are doing in society too. Sometimes is is that we create this knee jerk reactions, and we don't allow ourselves to to, I guess you could say, sit back and say, like, okay, whoa, you know, like, let's think this through here. Like, what is, what are we doing and how are the ramifications going to start? You know, like, we can only bubble wrap ourselves so much. Still have a life to live. And that's the biggest thing here that if I can share that with anybody is, is that we do have a life here to live. Uh, we have to live it as fully and with as much joy as possible, even though that there are things that are going on around us that may make us feel otherwise. You know, keep grasping on to those good feeling things. Be grateful of the children and, and the family that you have around you and the friends that you have around you. You know, like depression, um, and other various, I guess you could say, psychological disorders, you never know when it, something is going to creep up or, or open up, I guess you could say, and cause something. But we can't be so wary of them that all of a sudden, like, you know, we're, we're, we allow ourselves to stay indoors, you know, to like I say, to protect ourselves. We still have a life to live, you know, and that is what this time or that's what's happening in the planet on in this time right now is for us to keep exploring, keep getting out there, keep pushing forward, you know, keep spreading the joy and the love that you have within yourselves and share that with as many people as you can. Um... The other thing, too, well, and maybe I'll get into that, too, afterwards, is uh, empaths and how they have been, I guess you could say, been affected by various things. And I got my own opinions on that, and I'll share that with you in a bit. <laughs> so anyway, from what I understand, uh, I do already have a caller or two already waiting for me. So if I could get 312, please, that would be fantastic. Hello there. Hi, it's Karen Hi, from Chicago. How Hello, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, I have a question. My question is, um, do you ever see me in the future getting married? About 15 years ago, I was going to marry my high, uh, my college sweetheart, and he broke up with me and married someone else, someone very wealthy. And um, I'm not wealthy, but he married someone else. But I'm wondering if I'll find someone else uh, to, to marry. 
Okay. Well, let me see what we get here. Um, I'm just going to give the cards just a quick shuffle. My, okay. My first, I guess you could say, uh, gut reaction, and I guess you could say be, as I kind of feel the energy around you, is, is that, yes, I do feel that there is relationships there. Uh, I do feel some interesting strong ones uh, coming up, if anything. Um, but it feels like there could be a possibility that it may be just more than just one person that is coming up right now. So it could be that there you could be going into like a, oh, where you're going to be dating a bit. Uh, let's put it that way. Um, but as we kind of look at things, ooh, okay, well, this is good, actually, even with the cards. I am getting that there is going to be some happiness here, and I am getting you actually finding somebody that actually is going to be very emotionally strong in a lot of ways here um so needless to say anyway i do feel that you are going to actually marry somebody um, oh. but i do feel though that it is going to be a little bit yet and i do feel that there is going to be a little bit of dating involved you know going out with other people and that's when you're actually going to really kind of find out certain things too um, I think more so along the lines of you're going to actually kind of um, look at within yourself and say like, okay, well, what kind of person do I want to be? What kind of person am I looking for? Uh, definition, okay, is really what is going to come out in you. Um, it's going to be kind of like, okay, what what am I wanting? You know, like, yes, you know, we all want the person that, you know, like that's athletic, that's humorous, that's smart, and so forth and so forth. Uh, which is nice, but the thing is, though, is, is that start looking at yourself and say, like, okay, what do I really want in a person? You know, start kind of defining those types of things. And I do believe okay. that, you know, somebody is going to actually start coming towards you. Um, but like I said, I do feel that there's going to be probably a couple of people here that are going to actually kind of uh, come into your circle. Um it feels like it's going to be one, and then after that uh, one ends, there's going to be another one. And then it feels like the second one is going to be the one that's going to be more of the the compatible one. Um, now, what I am also getting, though, too, or what I'm feeling from you, though, is that it felt like you were kind of hurt in the past. Um and I don't really mean by, like, hurt as in, like, totally, you know, like, distraught or anything like that, but it just feels like you, you know, like, it just feels like, oh, you know, like, uh, the, the cart has given me nothing but lemons here. <laughs> right, <laughs> sort of, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, but the thing is, though, is that stop looking at the past now, okay? And, okay. And, kind of, and, and just kind of say to yourself that, you know what? This is going to be okay. Yeah, I got some lemons in the past, but now I am going to actually have somebody come through that's going to be wonderful, you know, that's really going to fit in with what I want and be a complement to what I want. So you could even write that down even, you know, and put it by your bed or whatever it is so that this way at nighttime, you actually just read it a couple of times to yourself. Okay, uh, and then what you can do then is is that as just before you go to sleep, okay, so that this way it, it's creating a thing in your subconscious and also within your own energetic field. Then this way, what ends up happening, you start to actually attract something of a similar nature to you. Okay, that will actually okay. be very much uh, in tune, I guess you could say, or in line with. Um, with what you want, you know, and and who you are sort of thing. Because, you know, okay. it's always nice to have somebody that's, you know, very similar to us, but we also want somebody that's going to be complementary. You know, and I've okay. seen it so many times, too, that with uh, when I do my aura readings and, and stuff like that, it's always kind of neat to see the couples uh, that come through because usually where one is, let's say, for example, maybe a little bit stronger in their solar plexus, for example, the other one will be a little bit weaker. Um, you know, like there's almost kind of like a weird sort of balance that they kind of create amongst each other. Um, so anyway, like I said, just kind of, like I said, just kind of write it down, you know, exactly what okay. you want and, and, and just put it by your bed so that this way you can read it a few times, 
get it into the, you know, like it, it's got to creep into the back of your subconscious so it can get into your energetic field. And the next thing you know, you'll be like a magnet attracting all kinds of people. <laughs> okay. I, I, okay. I do think good. that there's going to be some wonderful things that are coming for you. Now, when is that going to happen? Mm, I do definitely feel by the end of the year something is going to start to pop up. Um, but as we go a little bit further, it almost feels like another year and a bit before something really okay. serious starts to happen there. Okay. Okay. That sounds that sounds about right because I have my eye on someone, but they're not completely available just yet. So yeah. I have to make some changes, and that other person needs to make some changes. So kind of okay. There you yeah, go. Makes <laughs> makes sense. Makes sense. Thank Very you so good. much. Thank you. Thank you very Bye-bye. much for calling. Okay, bye bye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once again, clearing that whole throat of mine here because it goes definitely gets a little rough here. Like I said, I did a lot of talking this past weekend. Um usually a wonderful thing that a person can do, uh, for any type of like if you're doing a lot of talking on a day to day type basis, like let's put it this way, the first day it was like about uh, I think it was about 11 hours, and the second day was uh, about 8. Um, so, you know, like you're doing a lot of talking and the environment was dry. Uh, usually I like to have like a, a tea with with some uh, honey in it, actually, and that seems to really work very, very well. So, um, if you do ever have that issue, make certain you try that. It's a wonderful natural sort of remedy. Um Now, like I was saying about the empaths, um, that's always an interesting one. Um, And I I run into a lot of them uh, during my, I guess you'd say my travels. And a lot of people do like to call themselves that um, because they feel like, oh, you know, I'm I'm just so sensitive to other people's emotions and feelings and, and so forth. And I've been seeing, let's put it this way, a lot of... I guess you could, I don't want to say a lot, but I've been seeing various posts on Facebook and so forth uh, that do actually talk about, oh, it's okay to step back, it's okay to give yourself a day here and there, it's okay to feel that way, um, and that's fine to an extent. Um, but you got to remember, too, is, is that once again you want to be able to like i look at emotions on a i guess you could say a scale in a lot of ways you know like with grief grief and de- <laughs> grief <laughs> where did i come up with that one uh grief and depression um and so forth those are the bottom of the of the barrel you know like in regards to the scale and if you ever read a book by uh I believe it's uh, David Hawkins, a uh, wonderful book called Power vs. Force. I usually recommend it a, a few times here and there. But he, he's created this scale of emotions, I guess you could say. Uh, it's a logarithmic scale. So, in other words, you know, from one step to the next, it basically is like a factor of 10 almost. So every time you, you're taking another step, like it's almost as if the emotions really increase in energy quite a bit. Now, there are quite a few empaths that do come and see me, um, and they are usually looking for advice uh, in regards to how to deal with things. And I guess you could say that's where maybe, you know, this Las Vegas thing is is really kind of coming up for me. Um, And that's why I'm feeling particularly strong about this. Um, because of the fact that, let's put it this way, I'm sure I'm going to be getting quite a few more calls from various people over the next little while to say, like, oh, how can we deal with this? Well, the biggest thing, uh, one, is don't let your emotions, you know, control you to the extent um, where it becomes debilitating, okay? Um, Like, emotions are there as a tool more so than anything, like they're there as a, a physiological, I guess you could say, response to life's uh, experiences and life's events and so forth. So let's say, for example, you know, the birth of a baby, what does it do? 
you know, like all of a sudden, like you're there and you're crying, but it's like such joy and happiness, you know, like you feel that elation, I guess you could say. And then, like I said, too, you get situations like that happened in Las Vegas, where all of a sudden, you know, a lot of life has been lost and families have been hurt, you know, uh, and the thing is, though, is that as you, as an empath or whatever, yes, you're going to feel a lot of that despair and so forth. And it's okay to feel that, but don't let it control you. And that's the biggest thing there. As empaths and as psychics or mediums or anything of that sort of nature, um, you want to be able to be the leader out there. You know, like, it, and it's, yes, you know, there's going to be times where it's going to be tough and you're going to have a hard time feeling, I guess you could say, um, any sort of, I don't want to say compassion, but you're going to feel any sort of, like, you know, sense of relief or anything like that for a while. But the thing is, though, is that other people are going to be looking, you know, for somebody that's that's strong that can actually um, help them one way or the other. And sometimes all it takes is a word, a smile, or something like that, or even to say that, you know what, this is not going to get us down. This is only going to bring us up. And this is only going to make us realize that we need to make some sort of change within ourselves. You know, like to, like I said, we can't control other people. All we can do is control ourselves. Don't and with empaths it's a, or psychics or whatever. Uh, even myself, you know, when I used to go through a mall, and I used this analogy quite a bit. I used to go walk through a mall, and I used to have a difficult time. I couldn't wait to get out of there, mainly because every and you got to look at the mechanics of it. Is is that your aura basically goes out four to six feet. And in turn, what ends up happening is everybody else's aura is doing the same thing. So even though, let's say, for example, that you're walking by somebody and you're not actually physically touching them, but the thing is, though, is, is that you're, in essence, your electromagnetic field is touching somebody else's electromagnetic field, you know. And even though you're not physically touching them, but the energy is touching and rubbing against somebody else's. And that's like like fiberglass on skin, you know, it gets itchy <laughs> sort of thing. At least that's the way I like to kind of describe it. So in other words, you know, like you're going to feel something because it could be somebody else's energy may not be in, I guess you could say, resonance with yours. And therefore, what does it do? It makes you feel a little bit off. You know, and as you go around, you know, as you're walking around and you're touching other people's, yes, you're going to feel theirs too. And 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 once again, it's a little bit more of that itchiness that kind of happens. So, and it's going to be natural that you're going to pick up on other people's energy, the sort of thing, and that does happen quite a bit. You know, like, and that's okay, but you want to be able to let it go afterwards. And I usually have a practice now where I've let go quite a bit of uh, various things just through uh, visualization. Um, But usually what I recommend to people, though, once you're done for the day or once you're home, just jump into the shower for that five minutes so that this way uh, you're not just washing off the, the, I guess you could say, the grime of the day, but you're also washing off uh, other people's energies you know, sort of thing, and and visualize their energy sliding off of you and basically going down the drain to be recycled. Um, Now, the other thing that can go along with that, though, is, is that stop looking at it as other people are affecting you, but now start looking at it as you are now affecting them, okay? Um, and that sometimes all it takes is just that little 180 degrees sort of change of perspective where all of a sudden you are more empowered. And that is the biggest thing here. You have to start to feel that empowerment within yourself. 
okay? Um, and as empaths and so forth, you do want to be able to look at others and say, like, yeah, you know what? Maybe you're having a crappy day, but you know what? I'm going to smile at you today. I'm going to, you know, or I'm going to give you a hello, you know, or a, um, just anything, you know, sort of thing. Like I, even when I'm, let's say, for example, if I go to Tim Hortons, every once in a while I'll buy a coffee for the person behind me in the drive through And let's put it this way, they have no clue. But I give them a coffee and you know what? It makes their day a little bit. And that's okay. There's no harm in that. You know, for the $2 or whatever that I spend on somebody's coffee, you know, like, you can change a person for a whole week, if not longer, you know. And in turn, maybe they will do that to somebody else as well. And that's a wonderful thing to do. You know, like, that's kind of like a little anonymous gift that you're actually giving to somebody. Um, But like I said, now you are in the driver's seat. You're not the one being affected. You're now affecting somebody else. Like I said, you don't have to go out there and buy coffees for people or whatever. But sometimes all it takes, though, is just a smile, walking with some confidence and understanding that, yeah, you know what, this is my energy. And nobody else is going to affect me, but now I'm going to affect others. So as I described about uh, David Hawkins earlier, uh, he actually mentioned about, you know, like has a person rises in their, uh, I guess you could say, their emotional scale, uh, what ends up happening is, is that they start affecting a larger amount of people around them. So their circle of influence actually starts to increase. Um, now, before I get a little bit further into that, let's go into uh, caller 805, please, Roz. That would be fantastic. This is Donna. How are you? Very good. How about yourself? I'm good. Thanks. Um, Yeah, I spoke to you a while back, and I really enjoyed the little reading I got on the phone, but I don't know if I asked you the same question, so I'm going to ask it in case I didn't. And what it was is I heard my mother, who's on the other side, tell me I was going to be rewarded. So, And I know it was her. It was her voice and everything in my head. And... Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to know if maybe a marriage or a, a new lifestyle, a windfall. I am talking to someone online. I am trying to meet someone. His name is Mark, but I haven't met him yet. But he sounds nice, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, Mark is his name you're saying, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, hmm. Well, let me have a look here. Just, I'm just giving the cards a quick shuffle. Um and as I kind of look at this, I am seeing that there is going to be some happiness here involved. Anyway, let's put it that way. So this is a good thing. Uh, I do see him making some... Hmm. Does he have to travel or something like that? Uh, to well, he will to see me because I'm in Santa Barbara and he's in San Diego. So we're looking at about okay. three, hour, three, three and a half hour drive. Okay, um, because the thing that I'm kind of getting here is, is that, yes, there is some work that is involved here, okay, with this. Um, so in other words, it's kind of like, okay, there's some traveling that's involved and so forth. Um, now, the thing that goes along with this, though, is, is, like I said, initially I am feeling like there is going to be some happiness uh, going along here. I am getting, though, that there is going to be some work involved. Um, but if you're willing to, I guess you could say, kind of start letting go of some of those things or, you know, some of the the feelings of like, oh, okay, i got to drive down there or he's got to drive up here, then that's when the relationship will definitely start to happen. Oh, I don't find okay. that. Yeah, that doesn't bother me. Yeah, okay. if I drive um, there. Okay. So that's a that's a big thing there. Now the thing is though that I am getting those is that yeah it, it may kind of wear on you a little bit because yeah three hours is still a kind of a it's a bit of a drive uh, <laughs> you know there's no doubt about yeah. that. Um, Maybe more. But, yeah. Maybe you know, more. and that's the thing you know like and it's it long distance relationships are tough you know I'm not going to lie to you yeah. they're, they're they can be difficult but if you're willing and if he is willing then there is possibility there. 
okay? And that's what I'm kind of getting here is, is that there is possibility. Um, it does feel like, though, that he is kind of uh, holding on to certain things, okay? Like, it, uh, And by holding on, I don't know exactly what it is, but it almost feels... Oh, it's almost like he's kind of, uh, I almost want to say like he feels like he's holding on to like whether it be, uh, like I'm just getting stuff around his house or something like that. Like he, like he's kind of holding on to something there. Um, so I don't know exactly what it is, um, but like I said, if he's willing, there is possibility. That's the biggest thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you know, see where it takes you. Let me put it to you that way, okay, because I, I, I do feel that there is a lesson here in this uh, that does need to happen uh, for you more so than anything. Um, where, let's put it this way, you are going to, I think, experience quite a bit of um, uh, growth out of this. You know, like I think it's really going to define what it is that you want and how you want to handle it and stuff like that. Um, just keep your eyes open. That's the biggest thing there, okay? And, and it, yeah. And it, but, it feels, but it does feel pretty good, though. Let's put it that way. Good. I wanted to ask you, too, do you see the, I mean, like a windfall coming in, or me being lucky about something, or maybe a little job or anything like that because my finances, I'm retired, but I only get a certain, I'm on a fixed income, so it doesn't really yep. allow me money to do very much. Yep. Now, in regards to the windfall, I am seeing like, it's almost like as if there's going to be another part-time sort of thing coming up. Um, but I, I don't know why I want to say this, but I almost want to say that it almost feels as if there's going to be um, something of your own. It's almost like a little part-time sort of business of your own uh, that you're going to okay. have. Um, and I don't know why I want to say that, but it's almost as if there's something that you could do, um, like as a contractor maybe, or something along that lines, where you're not actually like uh, actually working for somebody, but you're actually kind of, but you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like as a contractor yeah. type of type of position or something like that. Um, I I think there's going to be some good things there that are coming for that uh, because I do actually get, let's put it this way, like some good cards here actually more so than anything. So there is going to be some celebration here I am getting and I'm also getting mm -hmm. that. Uh, but I think what it comes down to those is that you got to start putting it out there. Okay, like oh. and by putting it out there, I mean like, okay, like start looking um, but actually also too, and like I was saying to the other previous caller as well, is to uh, actually start writing things down a little bit um, okay. and, and, beside, and have it beside your bed. Like It's kind of like, okay, well, what do I want to do? Um, because it feels right now as, almost as if you're not really, um, I guess you could say, defining what it is that you're looking for and what you want. Um, you're just kind of hoping for something to come up. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, start defining what it is that you're looking for. Okay. Uh, now, in regards to the money aspect of it coming in, uh, I do feel like you are going to be getting something. Uh, it's not a huge yeah. amount, uh, but I do feel that you are going to be receiving some money here somewhere. Uh, I don't know if it's like a tax thing or if it's going to be, uh, it, it just feels like I, for some sort of reason I'm just kind of getting you receiving a check of some sort. Uh, because it's almost like I, I'm just getting this visual of a check that you're actually going to be getting. Um, so, the windfalls? Eh. Like I, I can't, I can't say that I, I see you winning the lottery or like anything like that. I don't, you know, I almost won. I was thinking oh, I really? picked four of the numbers, and um, you know, you had to pick six. You had to, but I was thinking four all day. Four is going to win. Four is going to win. And then I played my mother's number one. I would have won fifteen thousand. I didn't follow my oh. intuition. Oh, I was sick. I can imagine all day. That would 
All day I was thinking Boris going to win, and I didn't play it. I don't know what happened in that second that I did it. I just didn't play the four, and I've been playing it all day. I don't know. Trust your intuition. I always tell that to everybody. Trust your intuition. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, isn't that the truth? That wouldn't have changed my life, 15,000, but it still would have been a nice chunk to go to Thailand or something. I could have taken well, my niece absolutely. and nephew and gone on a yeah, night that little trip. That would have been lovely, actually. <laughs> yeah, 15 yeah. grand is still, uh, it's still a nice little piece of money. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it sure. wasn't good. I... Yeah. Like I said, I think something's coming for you. It's just a matter of uh, just give yeah. yourself a little bit of time. Uh, but I do yeah. want to say those, like I said, just make certain you're defining what it is that you're looking for. Use that oh, lottery yeah. aspect of what you did, okay? Um, because like you were saying, oh, I'm getting four, I'm getting four, I'm getting four, and then what did you do? You put a one instead. So yeah. What I'm saying, though, is, is that, okay, start defining and use that as your, I guess you could say, one of your lessons. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be within the lottery, but what you can say is like, okay, well, if I'm going to have my own little part-time maybe business, what am I going to do for it? What am I going to have as a part-time business where it's flexible enough, where I can still enjoy myself, where I can make a few extra dollars, where I can, you know, that type of thing. You know, start looking at something like that. Look at those skills that you have. Okay, mm-hmm. um, because I, I do feel that you are very, let's put it this way, you're very capable in regards to many yeah. things. Uh, I do feel that actually you're very organized, you're very logical in your uh, in your procedure almost. <laughs> it's almost like you have a procedure in yourself. Um, so anyway, start, yeah, yeah, start defining what it is that you're looking for and what you want to do. Okay. Okay, write it I'll down do and that. put it bed. Yeah. All right, I'll do that tonight. That okay, okay, sounds good. Thank, Thank you, you very you much, so much for calling. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, one more quick caller. Um, number 831, please, Roz. That would be fantastic. Oh, hi. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. You know, I'm seeing this man. I've been interested in him for a long time almost a year, and he's been interested in me, and there have been a number of obstacles, and it's just been uh, a long story, but um, <clears throat> I'm not I'm not sure, you know, what he's up to right now. There hasn't been some communication, and um, I got uh, I'm kind of upset about something, and, you know, I'm just wondering, am I deluded about this person? Is he ever going to, uh, you know, be with me? Mm. And how long have you been together, or trying to be together, I guess you could say? Like, how long has it been that you guys have been, uh, I guess you could say, kind of dating or whatever? Hello? Hello? All right. I think I lost her. Um, so anyway, uh, if you're still out there and if you can still hear me, uh, what I will say though is, is that there is some, let's put it this way. Yes, there is that attraction that is always there. It seems like, uh, but what I am feeling though is that there, there is going to be, huh, I do want to say that there is some possibilities there. Um, but the thing is, though, is that I does feel like, though, for him, that there is going to be, he's kind of up and down emotionally. Uh, he's kind of like a roller coaster. Uh, and therefore, it is going to affect you a bit. Uh, it is going to make you feel um, like there is going to be some more of the same. Um, I think the thing is, though, is that you have to define what it is that you you want. You know, like if you've been finding that it's nothing but, uh, I guess you could say, a roller coaster over the past while, um, where you're trying to make something work and it's just not coming together, then maybe you do need to look at what it is that you want. You know, if you're prepared to keep going this way, then so be it, you know, like that's up to you. But um, if you were 
getting tired of it, then maybe you do need to make a decision. Okay? So if you are hearing me out there, uh, call our 831, then um, my thoughts and, and prayers will go for you, or towards you anyway, in regards to all of this. Okay? And I, I hope it comes to some sort of conclusion, I guess you could say. Um, so, anyway, like I was saying about the ads um, earlier, like I said, like a lot of us or whatever, um, we kind of, like I said, you know, like, like we kind of go through lives and we do feel, I guess you could say, a lot of the things that are going on around us and and that's natural. You know, like, but the thing is, is that in that book, like I was saying, of, of um, David Hawkins there about the power versus force, is, is that we can create, like I said, a circle of influence around us. Okay, and that's the thing here. We can create, um, just let's say, for example, like, okay, the Buddha, Jesus, uh, Mother Teresa, all those wonderful people or whatever. Um let's put it this way, you know, like they have had their circle of influence was in the millions. Now, I'm not saying that your influence is going to be as, you know, as wide, okay? And that's, but that's okay. Sometimes all it takes is us to affect, let's say, for example, 50 people within our circle of influence and maybe somebody else will affect another 50 people and somebody else will affect another. If we remain positive, if we remain strong, you know, we can get through a lot of different things here. That's, that's the important thing. Keep adding to your circle of influence, you know, and keeping that positive light within them. And in turn, somebody else will as well. And if one person here, one person there, one person has a circle of a thousand, one person has a circle of twenty, whatever, you know. But if all these people has a, have a circle around them that they are shining a light on, that they are bringing up, then we can actually really affect the planet on a on a wide scale basis, you know. Like, and it's been proven. You know, like numerous times, actually, and it's kind of like when they, uh, during World War II, when they an announced the, the end of the war, it's almost like as if the world breathed this sigh of relief, and it's almost as if there was a, a general consciousness shift uh, during such a big event like that. So the thing is, though, is that we can affect the consciousness of the planet just that little bit within around us and if you can do it and if somebody else can add to it and so forth and so forth then then there is hope there is possibility there is capability out there you know like it's a uh, like i said there is a lot of things that do go on that can be scary you know um but we have to rise above it we have to rise above the fear you know and i hope tonight out of anything that we that we all just like i say we rise above our fears just that little bit you know like even if it's a personal fear that we have within ourselves you know, uh, fear of, I don't know, the tax man, fear of, fear of that health scare or something like that. Those are natural things and it's going to happen, but you can rise above it. You know, like you have the strength to do so. And there's, and I believe in you. You just have to start believing in yourself too. That would be a big thing there. Believe in yourself. You know, like, there's no harm in that. Believe in the people that are around you. Believe in your kids. Believe in your other family members. You know, like, we all have something in us that we can give and that we can share. And if you can do that, you know, like, uh, that's what makes the world go around. <laughs> okay? Um, so, anyway, um, in regards to a few 
future upcoming stuff? Well, I didn't really write down much here, but I know that uh, as of October here, I am actually going to be adjusting my prices uh, to come up with a little bit of a sale here for everyone. So I will be actually dropping my prices probably about 25%, maybe a little bit more um for the month of october uh so that if you are interested in the reading i will be available to do so um and as well i am going to be over at moonflowers i believe it's on the 19th of this month where i will be doing a past life regression for the for a group of people actually and that's where a lot of neat things can kind of come up a lot of things that you can explore, uh, and sometimes it brings to light some of the limiting beliefs that we have within us. You know, those are the things, like I said, that uh, that seem to hold us back quite a bit. It's not just the fear, but it's those limiting beliefs. You know, and I know, let's say even for myself, you know, like. Uh, you know, like I was raised a certain way, you know, by parents that uh, were a little bit more old-fashioned, let's put it this way. Um, and, you know, I love them for it, let's put it this way. Like, I, I still do care and I still do love them very much, even though they, they've passed on. Um, but there's a lot of things, though, that um, made me realize that, you know, that I have, I guess you could say, absorbed a limiting belief within myself that I needed to let go of. And sometimes that's where a regression or even a past life regression uh, really brings to light, I guess you could say, some of those limiting beliefs and allowed me to actually, I guess you could say, move forward and to um, grow. You know, my soul could grow. Uh, where it can get past those hurdles. And sometimes that happens, you know, like we, we have those little hurdles that we need to learn from, that we need to explore and learn and so forth, and and that's that's natural. That's going to happen. So, anyway, with, uh, with that said, uh, like I said, please keep um, looking at my website for the next little while because, like I said, I will be adjusting my prices here over the next little bit. Uh, to reflect a sale for this month. And with that, or what's going to go along with that, is some other interesting things that I'm going to start introducing as well. Um, and aside from that, thank you very much for uh, joining me tonight. And I hope you have a wonderful week, and keep shining your light. Thank you very much, and have a great, wonderful week. Bye-bye. Hi, you've reached the High Fashion Hotline. Hi, my family's going to a tailgate, and I want our style to stand out from the crowd. Just go to Old Navy. Old Navy? Yep, Old Navy's got all the latest fall styles. Plus, during Old Navy's colossal sale, you'll save up to 50% off store-wide. Did you say up to 50% off? I did, so don't sit on the sidelines. Old Navy has the perfect pants from 19 bucks, stylish dresses from 15 bucks, and comfy tees for the family from just 6 bucks. right now at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. We're cheering for Old Navy. High Fashion, Old Navy. Valid 10-2 to 10-10. Select styles only.